Hello, and welcome to 20 Lore Pro, a community of Lorcana players who enjoy deck building, competing, and opening Lorcana product. You can find out more at our Discord community, 20 Lore Pro slash Discord. Link in the description. We have tons of upcoming events, deck lists, and deck discussions. In today's video, we'll be watching Evolutions Trading Lorcana 1K, the finals. Aaron piloting Emerald Steel versus Drew piloting Ruby Amethyst. Wish our competitors luck and enjoy the video. And we are live into the finals of Evolution Evolutions Trading, Lorcana 1K here with the newest and latest Into the Inklands set three of Lorcana. Excited to see Lorcana Bro piloting Emerald Steel like we saw in top four, playing against Drew, who we also saw earlier in the tournament piloting Ruby Amethyst. One of the key cards in Drew's deck being that strong Jim Hawkins. Really excited to see how these two players come out today as we compete here in the finals. Lorcana Bros already establishing a strong early board with two Ursula along with a cloud, cloud Kicker and a Beast, Tragic Hero. We see that he's really got a board state where he's trying to draw as much as he can each turn as well as control the cards that are in Drew's hand. Two of those Ursulas probably haven't taken some songs. I missed it. Drew here with the Queen's Castle. Aaron taking his turn, using that beast to draw an extra card off the top. Plays a second beast. using a Strength of the Raging Fire to take care of Jim Hawkins from Drew's hand. Jim Hawkins able when he ETBs to play a location for free. Jim Hawkins being a strong inclusion into these Ruby Amethyst decks from Into the Inklands. Really a great card, especially on RLS, which would give him evasion. In this case, having the Queen's Castle giving him the ability to draw an extra card each turn as long as the character is at that location. Aaron passing the turn to Drew. Drew 
Drew playing that ever strong Maui. Passing it back to Aaron, who's taking his turn. Or Connor Bros taking his time trying to decide what the next play is the best for him. We see Drew having moved that Maui over to the Queen's Castle trying to draw extra cards this turn. Both players just finding some way to draw more cards each turn, trying to stay ahead of the curve and have that advantage in their hand. We see Lord Conobro already has that with that Beast Tragic Hero in play. Drew trying to maintain it here with that Queen's Castle in the Maui. Beast Tragic Hero here just being one of the best cards from set 2, most likely. Just having that 3-5 ability to turn into a huge challenger if it's damaged. And there's another Strength of the Raging Fire from Lorcana Bros to take out that strong Maui and finishing off that location. Aaron opting to play that whole new world, seeing it, that way he's able to play this turn with the, whatever he drew. uses strike a good match to try to look at the top two cards to find something that he may want such as an Ursula to try to get rid of any strong powerful songs that Drew may have in his hand strike a match or strike a good match being a card from Into the Ink Lands being possibly one of the best cards featuring Mulan There's that strike a good match up there on the screen for you to see. Just giving you the ability to really cycle through your deck very well. We're excited to be here at the finals here at Evolution's Trading with their Lorcana 1K. With the very first weekend of Into the Inklands for set three, Drew playing a Turn of Bogs Followers card that we've seen him earlier in the tournament before using to quest and not having to banish it to draw a card. It's a May ability, leaving him with the choice of what he would like to do. There's another Strength of the Raging Fire from Lorcana Bro taking care of that Madame Medusa. Madame Medusa just being a strong card, very similar to Lady Tremaine, having the ability though to choose its targets as long as it has a three or less attack. Or, uh, Drew playing a, another Jim Hawkins to get out a free the Queen's Castle. Jim Hawkins just when he ETB is able to play a location for free and then traverse to that location. Meaning that next turn Drew's going to have a free draw 
off of the Queen's Castle, putting that dice there as a reminder. Aaron, we see building up a pretty good board state here with three of the two drop Ursulas. These Ursulas are just incredibly powerful, able to make sure that you're playing what you want to play, when you want to play it, by targeting the cards in your hand of your opponent that are pesky to your strategy. Almost for a lot of Magic players who know this card, it's very similar to the card called Duress, able to reveal your opponent's hand discarding a song. Drew. Looking at Aaron's board state, trying to find probably a way to deal with all of it, if he can. Seeing his cards get whittled down one by one, Strength of the Raging Fire, along came Zeus, so many strong interactive cards from Aaron. So many answers that Aaron has been able to draw, be able to find. And there is a Let the Storm Rage On, allowing Aaron to draw another card. Drew taking his turn. Using a Merlin to draw a rabbit. I'm sorry, using his Merlin rabbit to draw. Erd and I agree, that's uh, very interactive. That's something that Steel is very good about doing, having very powerful interactive cards. And Into the Inklands is appearing to be no different for this color set. Drew playing a goat after that Merlin rabbit going up to eight. We're seeing both of these players very steadily throughout this match going back and forth on the lore count, trying to ebb and flow their advantage on the board, trying to find an advantage over their opponent. Aaron, aka Lorcanabros, taking his turn with his three Ursula. Playing a Morph, one of the, if not the best, shift targets, especially in a Floodborne driven deck like this. Morph being from Treasure Planet, such a beloved character. Glad to see it have such a strong ability on a card here in Lorcana. We'll see what Aaron, aka Lorcana Bros, chooses to shift on this Morph later on. Choosing the quest goes up to 12 lore. Drew staring down at a pretty sizable and strong board state. Trying to find the best way to take out as much as he can without allowing Aaron to take this game away. Again, there's no time limit here in the finals. Both players able to take as much time as they can in order to play the to make the best plays that they possibly can. Drew really looking over his options. We see that Madame Mint box in his hand. Very strong card. Maybe allowing him to attack in and then bounce something. Chooses the Crab, which is now strong enough to take out that Robin Hood, Champion of Sherwood. Using the Rabbit to take care of Cloud Kicker. Choosing to play another, the Queen's Castle. Again, both of these players just going back and forth with their resource gain and their card advantage on the board. We see Drew passing it back. Hopping to save that Madame Nim Fox for another day. Drew going up to nine due to the goat being banished. Lorcana Bros using one of his Ursulas to take care of that rabbit and clean it up. Plays a Bucky as a follow-up.
a second Bucky. Someone asked earlier if this deck was a discard deck. It really has the ability to become one, and we are currently seeing that now. Two Bucky's on the board with a Floodborne hero, Divine Hero Hercules. Bucky just having such a strong ability. Every time you play a Floodborne, your opponent discards a card. Make that times two. Good call there by RMB saying that that 1 3 Ursula would not die to the 2 3 of the rabbit. We'll see if our producer is able to say anything before the game continues too far. Looks like we may be. Okay, they informed him right now. Good call on by RMB. Able to save uh, Lorcana Bro and ourselves. Good plays. Drew following up his play with an RLS. One of the new Into the Ink Land locations. RLS just giving you the ability to have your characters have evasive, as well as paying two less to move a character here if you have a character that's already there. Manticore, thoughts on Herc versus Robin? Playing both, Manticore says. Best of both worlds. Sometimes the best answer to a question is both and. Hard to maybe find room in some decks to play both, but if you're able to, both cards are incredibly strong, especially depending on your meta that you're going up against. That Resist 2 can really be a bane to so many steel decks. Aaron, a.k.a. Lorcana Bro, up to 15 lore. He's got two Buckies on board, as well as three Ursula. Drew opting to get rid of one Bucky with a, ma with a Minnie Mouse. Aaron goes up to 19. Plays a sec plays another Robin Hood and passes the turn back to Drew, who reveals the teeth and ambition, even the handshake to Aaron. What a good game by both Aaron and Drew. Aaron just able to get ahead early on the board and really control the cards that were going into Drew's hand, allowing him to draw off of Whole New World, but choosing the cards he kept by playing and following it up with Ursula's. Well, here we are in game two, Drew starting us off, inking a Minnie Mouse Surfer in passing. That Minnie Mouse Surfer just having that ability to lure for two, being evasive, really strong card. Drew opting to ink it, however, seeing it not being viable yet in this matchup. Aaron playing a turn one Robin Hood. Will we possibly see a turn three shift Robin Hood? Only time will tell. Aaron playing a turn two Chernabog's followers. Chernabog and Amber, specifically that 9-9 being so strong. And here's a turn two Bucky from Aaron. We're seeing the discard strategy come alive here for Aaron. We'll see if any more Floodborns can come into play here. 
R and B giving a shout out to Aaron Lorcana Bros. We're wishing both these players the best, but a big shout out to Aaron. We'll see what happens here on turn three. I'd love to see a turn three shift. Robin Hood. Drew playing a second Minnie Mouse surfer that he had. As I was saying earlier, just a great quester. Aaron playing a turn three Bucky. What is better than one bar Bucky, a second Bucky? Inking and playing that Robin Hood onto his shift Robin Hood onto the regular Robin Hood. That is two discards. Craig, we really appreciate all the gifted subs. Thank you so much for joining the community and allowing others to be a part of what we're hearing what we're doing here at 20 Lore Pro. Appreciate those subs. There's a Jim Hawkins on Drew's side, able to play down an RLS, giving his Jim Hawkins evasive. Another flood button by Aaron. We see no cards in Drew's hand at this point. If it's not one Bucky, it's two Buckies. They are now the bane of Drew's existence as they have discarded all of Drew's cards from his hand. Drew having both creatures with evasive able to quest for four a turn drew is going up every single turn by four can aaron deal with these two evasive creatures before it is too late many now being on rls has double evasive what does that do for you RLS being a card that gives your characters evasive. Many already having it though. There's one evasive character gone, specifically Minnie Mouse with the Storm Ray John and RLS being taken care of. Aaron did find the outs that he needed in order to take care of these evasive creatures. Jim Hawkins wanted to take care of one of these Buckies. Not needing the dice because he knew he wanted to take care of the other Bucky with a Madame Mimph Bach. I know I saw Aaron ink some of those Robins. I'm not sure if he discarded one last turn, Shaky. Challenging with the Robin. That's right, Slick. It's 1-0, Aaron. We're on the finals. Game two. Aaron taking the first game. We'll see if Drew can come back and make it 1-1. Right now, it's it could go either way. There's a big be prepared by Drew. Setting back the game clock, although Aaron has cards in hands, he's still able to do what he might need. True playing Rafiki. This Rafiki being great early game as a good challenger. Not quite the top deck that you'd like here in this late game format right here. Aaron using a lot of Stormary John, drawing cards. Because it was sung by Ursula, I guess to draw two. Playing a Hercules Divine Hero has resist to 
this Hercules will be a difficult challenge for Drew to face. There's that Robin Hood new card into the Inklands for y'all to see. We've seen this played a couple of times by Aaron, but really helped him out there in the early game. So like asking a great question, if there's no target for Let the Storm Rage on, are you still going to be able to draw an extra card? I believe without having a target for the chosen damage, you will not be able to draw a card. In this case, Nexus is posting out that he chose his own Ursula. That is a smart play that I've seen happen before. Aaron, using that Hercules Divine Hero to take care of that Madame Medusa. Madame Medusa being such a strong card, similar to Lady Tremaine, but different in the fact that you get to choose as long as that attack that's three or less. We see a Jim Hawkins here on board. Doesn't have evasive due to not having RLS on board, but is able to quest for two. Using Ursula to cast Strike a Good Match means he gets to draw four cards and discard two. I believe he'll take each of those actions one at a time, though. Drawing two, then discarding, and then doing that action again. Aaron here with a beast, Tragic Hero, able to draw an additional card each upkeep, uses a Mother's Note Best to return that Jim Hawkins back to hand. Wonderland, that's right. I believe that that Hercules had two damage on it, leading that Rafiki able to clean it up. Aaron playing a Robin Hood that may transform or shift into another Robin Hood later on. Decides to pass it up and not quest with the beast just in case to protect it. Drew with a Merlin Rabbit able to draw a card trying to gain more resources. There's that Strike, strike a Good Match. One of the best Mulan cards, at least in Lorcana so far. Aaron again using Ursula to sing Let the Storm Rage On, getting a double trigger on it. Able to draw twice, dealing four damage to his target. Beast really doing so much here. Huge, huge Ursula play. Getting rid of Drew's Be Prepared that he had been saving. I agree, Slick. Our emo beast is a beautiful beast here in this round. Beast Tragic Hero probably being one of the best cards from set two, especially in Steel. Has been doing a lot of work here for Aaron. Drew really seeing the power of that new Ursula Deceiver as that Ursula was able to get rid of his Be Prepared that would have cleaned up Aaron's board. Drew trying to find another Be Prepared. Plays a Maleficent to make another draw. Plays a Maui. 
decides to take out Ursula, which has been a bane to his existence so far. Double seeing Let the Storm Rage On twice. Double seeing Strike a Good Match. Ursula really being an MVP alongside Beast Tragic Hero as Ursula into the Inklands has done so much for air in this game. All of the card advantage that we saw from set two with Ruby Amethyst still exists here in this format, but we're seeing it just as much, if not more, in this Emerald Steel deck as Ursula really has created a powerhouse of moves. Being able to sing these colors these cards to draw Aaron exactly what he needs RMB pointing out that this may be the best beast play ever as it has drawn Aaron six extra cards this game Wonderland, I tend to agree with you that uh, Dragonfire is not only a good target for Beast, but in the Amber matchups where they play Chernobog, such a uh, scary card to see against you. Drew playing the Queen's Castle. Moving Maleficent over, trying to get his own version of a Beast on the board while also gaining lore. Wants to draw an extra card each turn, just like Aaron's been doing pretty much the entire match. Aaron playing Cloud Kicker, which is able to return Maleficent back to Drew's hand. We're seeing Aaron here, aka Lorcana Bros, at 11. Trying to decide what to quest with. Goes up to 13. And top decks a B prepared. This match is not over yet. Drew top decks. A be prepared to keep himself in the game. It is 13 to 13. No hands on Drew's side. No cards. Meanwhile, Aaron here. Four to five cards in hand. What an incredible top deck from Drew. We knew he had the other one that Ursula took. But Ursula couldn't handle the one it can't see. Aaron coming back with a Tinkerbell. And another Ursula. If it's not Ursula, if it's not Beast, it's Ursula. There is the new Prince Eric. This Prince Eric being a four drop, but having the ability to quest for two, even though it's unequable, and can bash a chosen character when it is banished. Really strong addition to Am to Ruby. Orcana Bros choosing to quest up, going up to 16. Passing it back to Drew. Drew playing a Cusco, bouncing it back so that way he can play a Madame M. Fox, taking out Aaron's Ursula. Getting rid of Prince Eric and choosing to banish the Tinkerbell, leaving an exposed Madame M. Fox for this Jafar. Instead, uses the Let the Storm Rage on to draw a card and is able to quest up to 17 and draw a card. Cusco having one damage on him from the ETB Tinkerbell. Tinkerbell just being such a strong card from set one, still seeing play to this day because of its stats. Very strong abilities. Drew plays a Maleficent, draws a card, looking at Aaron 17. Drew finding teeth and ambition and not enough 
shakes hands with Aaron. And that is your tournament. Congratulations to Aaron for winning Evolutions Trading Lorcana 1K, the first competitive Lorcana tournament for set three. Congratulations, Aaron, Lor aka Lorcana Bro, a member of the 20 Lore Pro community, and to Drew for making it into the finals with his Ruby Amethyst deck. Both of these players playing an incredible match. We want to give a huge shout out to Aaron Lorcana Bro playing Emerald Steel and really showing the power of cards like Ursula and Beast. Ursula being a huge MVP of this new Emerald Steel deck list. Just double singing, let the storm rage on. Double singing, strike a good match. Getting so many card advantages to Aaron that he was really able to get ahead. Really glad to see Aaron and Drew play. Thank you all so much for joining us over on Twitch. If you missed any of the matches earlier from today's tournament, you can head on over to 20lore.pro slash YouTube, where later on this week we will post all of the Lorcana rounds from this tournament. Again, I'm your host, Sir Ashtown. Behind the scenes, our producer, Luxac. We want to thank you all so much for joining us today. We want to also thank Evolutions Trading for hosting today's Lorcana tournament, especially on the weekend of the release for set three into the Inklands. Tomorrow on Monday, the 20 Lore YouTube will have a new YouTube video of opening product from Into the Inklands. We also want to tell everyone that on March 17th, 20 Lore Pro is heading to Dallas, where we're going to be streaming the Hunter Burden Memorial Orkana Championship. 20 Lore Pro has the exclusive streaming rights for the tournament, and we want to bring awareness to the gaming community of suicide in the community and what you can do to help. 20, 20 Lore Pro will be there and Hunter Burden is often known as a Magic the Gathering tournament, a big charity event. This time they have chosen to also host alongside it a Lorcana Championship. Again, we want to thank y'all so much for joining us today. We'll have all these rounds up on YouTube for you to view when you have a chance. Thank y'all so much for coming.